If you were given $50,000 so you could chase your dream, what dream would you chase? Fine quality tobacco said. I'd buy a dirt farm and race bikes and things like that. You can just buy shitty land in East Texas and let people come ride their bikes and ATVs for a fee. Get yourself a backhoe, build some berms, it can be as profitable as any farm on the same amount of land all day and twice on Sunday. K. Fredrickson said. What about liability insurance? I'd expect that you'd want to incorporate, likely an LLC, to prevent your personal finances from being subjected to a potential lawsuit. Not a smarty type business guy at all. I can't even spell business without depending on spell check. I just know some people with tales of dreams lost due to not thinking of that stuff. Regulatory Capture said. Some states, like Kentucky, absolve owners of recreational land from liability, but only if they don't charge for access, which kind of breaks OPS plan. As long as you weren't grossly or intentionally negligent, like building booby traps, you don't have any duty of care for people who are on your land and you don't assume liability for any injuries. Personally, as a rock climber and mountain biker, I think these are fantastic laws. Say you are an oil or timber company and you own thousands of acres of land for the resource value, but say there are also some nice cliffs on the property. If a group of climbers approaches you and asks if they can come climb on your land while you're not using it, the default answer from any company with a lawyer is probably going to be hell no. Nobody wants the liability of someone on their land doing a potentially dangerous activity, but if you have a state recreation law, you might be like sure, you can use it, we're not going to log it for 15 years. Bad Smarkabad said. I deposited a check once, this is back on like 98, to my bull account on the same day that four withdrawals were supposed to happen. I went to the bank right when they opened and deposited it. Instead of processing the check into my account first then doing the withdrawals, they decided to start with the withdrawals first, starting with the largest one that overdrafted me. They then did the other three withdrawals, each one was between 5 and 10 bucks, each one overdrafting me further and a $35 fee for each one for a total of 4 overdrafts and $130 on fees. Then they deposited my check, which still left me in the negative. I don't bank with Bo anymore. I on Cloud9 said. 50,000 isn't a lot to have, but it's a lot to owe. Can't buy a house with it, it's not enough for retirement, could buy a decent car with it. Don't get me wrong I'd be ecstatic if I had an extra 50k but I don't think it would be life altering. Kitchen Swill for Pigs said. We were able to put down 3%, so like $4.50k, on our home. I live in a cheaper area but it's doable. Not that $4.50k isn't a chunk of change, but it's far easier to come up with than $50k. Edit we bought our house for $170k in a small town near a bigger city in a poor state. It's definitely not the norm for most home buyers. I was a first time home buyer and while I knew we got lucky, I didn't realize how unusual our experience was. My bad. Shorcy said. Fuck you Quarian fucker. Your mom's sex dungeon has so many sex swings hanging from the ceiling, it looks like a jungle. I made her come and she yelled like Tarzan. Proud back Hunkinman said. That's not enough to really quit your job and chase any dream. Not sure if Op is from a country with a lower call than the US or if they're a teen who has no idea how fast $50k goes. Edit, it's possible Op chose this amount knowing it was limited. If they did, it'd be more clear if they said if you were only given. So you couldn't afford that extravagant of a dream. If that's the case, then disregard my comment. This money works for some dreams but really limits a lot at least in higher cost of living countries and time that can be devoted to it. Yes, $50k isn't nothing, but this post thread is about money for a chase your dream fantasy not money to survive on living in an affordable area in your current city for a couple of years. There are some countries where this money goes a long way and I agree that definitely works as an answer to the op. But most of this site's audience are based in the US and other Anglophone countries with similarly high cost of living. Sid the Fiddle said. Yup. Went to college for a degree that gives me a lucrative career. I make very good money just starting out, graduated last month, but as soon as my student loan bills start hitting in 6 months then it's as if I'm not making a lot. And the only way I could have made this type of money in the field I really enjoy was to go to school. The only way for me to go to school was to take out private loans. 
Moral of the story is that college is too damn expensive. Sid the Fiddle said. My father was a blue collar worker. Worked a labor job in a steel mill all his life. Still is working and he's damn near 70. I'm an engineer. Busted my ass in college so I could get here and work more of a white collar job. Although I'm out of the job site a lot. A lot of money to me for income is in the six figure range. Since my family was never able to obtain that. And I'm pretty close to that range, just not there yet cause I'm an entry level engineer. As for college, fuck, it's all expensive. Community colleges are cheaper but their degrees are nearly as respected as major universities. Most CCs won't offer engineering or some sciences honestly. I spent $20k, tuition, a year on school. That doesn't include books, apartment rent, food, etc. My parents made too much money for the government to deem me deserving of financial aid, but my parents made way too little money to actually pay for my education. They were only able to co-sign for me and that's it. Dooney Money said. For what it's worth, I was in more or less your same position 10 years back when I started my career, $70k salary, $60k debt. I made the personal choice to prioritize paying that debt over all else. Bonuses tax refunds, all extra cash went to the loans. I managed to pay them off in full after about 4 years, and have spent the last 6 without debt as my salary grew. I still work with a few folks from my start class, and while we all make 3 extra starting income, most of them still have monthly loan payments and have spent thousands more on the interest. Unsolicited financial advice is the worst, so all I'll say is the payments do suck up front, it's a broken system, to be sure. Even with all that being true, it sounds like you've put yourself in an excellent position and will be free of them soonish. Dooney Money said. I couldn't agree more, I always find it crazy when they mention they still have loans left. The best I can assume is that they've stuck to the minimum payments and prioritized other uses of their cash, whether it be a more expensive apartment, they all still rent, I'm the only homeowner in the bunch, or a more extravagant trip, another buddy, without loans. Just told me that the family timeshare he had free use of was not up to snuff for his significant other, and they're now spending $1,500 night on a ritzier vacation rental. Lifestyle creep is very effective at eating up cash, especially when the march from $70k to what I make now came about 15% 22% at a time. I'm so extremely privileged to be where I am, but I see so many people in the same shoes that somehow still live paycheck to paycheck. Agreeing Storm 9 said. Honestly, this is harder to do than you think. I busted my ass and lived on nothing for years so I could use nearly all my income to pay down debt. If I could beg, borrow or steal a dollar somewhere in the budget it went to pay down debt. Then I woke up with no debt years down the road but also if I think about enjoying any of my money I get massive anxiety. And result is that I still live the same way I always did I just put every dollar I can beg borrow or steal in savings or I give it to some charity. I feel guilty if I spend on myself now because that's the behavior I learned while digging out of debt. Stupid thing is I saw my grandparents do the same thing. They were depression era people and grew up with absolutely nothing so they saved every penny. Even after they became well off financially they still stash ketchup packets from MCDs so they don't have to buy ketchup and my grandmother laments that she wants to grow tomatoes but can't afford tomato steaks. They have been cheap baked into their DNA now. Curitas to Fixus said. Honestly. Move out from my town and just be able to live for a few months on my own while I find a job I moderately enjoy. I'd save the rest and probably invest it later into making my own business someday, but the priority for me now is to get out of my hometown ASAP. Edit. WTF2K upvotes I almost didn't reply cause I thought no one would care. Thanks guys. Colon. Hooverdam said. As a musician and a frugal person, you should check out local buy-sell pages on Facebook or the Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, ETC and you can get really good deals. I bought my $400 guitar for $40 bucks. Not only that, a $50 minus $100 instrument may not sound as good but it will at least get you in the door for learning. If you decide you have no interest in learning the instrument you bought, you're only out $50 minus $100 instead of $300 $400. Second thing, if you go to a music shop, family owned is better, you can ask them if they have any used instruments which will be cheaper for you. 
they would also most likely be willing to accept a lower price for any instruments that have cosmetic damages. I got $50 taken off my ukulele for some dings it got going through transit to the shop. Lust Nugget said, I've always been a sucker for infinite games that have a lot of depth to gameplay. It would be an infinite randomly generated dungeon crawler with a runescape style crafting skill system in the overworld. There would be very strategic gacha systems that aren't linked to any type of payment. You dungeon crawl, collect loot, come back to base to process your rewards and repeat. Ideally it would have Warcraft 3s graphics but sharper. If Run Escape, Diablo 2, Path of Exile, and Xenoblade 2 were all mixed together. Procrastinator T said. I'm not sure what country you're in, but a people in the UK, and us, costs around £8,000 10, 000, which is maybe a bit more accessible than $50k. There are ways to get under £10,000, for example some places have deals where you can bulk buy 5 or 10 lessons at a time and save some cash, though be wary of schools offering deals like this, as there is risk involved, and as always, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Along the powered fixed wing route, you could also fly micro lights, which is cheaper still. I've had just as much fun flying micro lights as I have flying big powered stuff, despite what anyone may say. Gliders are the cheapest fixed wing to fly, and are a stunning way to get around. They're extremely cheap to learn to fly, and you get just as many skills. Your local gliding club will have specific rates, but glider launches are around £5 for a winch, and £30 for a rotel. Plus 30p minute for the glider. That's around pound symbol 20 pound symbol 30 an hour, which beats the 100 a pound HR powered costs. A slightly different route to getting airborne if fixed wing flight is still a little too expensive is flying paramotors. The FAA, USA, and CAA, UK, governing bodies over airspace rules and regs, classifies paramotors under ultralights, and you don't need a license, medical, or anything to fly them. You could in theory just get up and go, although this is not a smart choice. A good training course costs around £2k, which is definitely easier than $50k, or even the £10k of a people, and you could get gear after that when you know you're into it. Plus, flying paramotors, whilst you still have to abide by all the airspace rules and regs, you have loads more freedom to fly around your local areas, or throw it in the car and go on a trip. They're a super cheap and accessible way to fly. Summer is coming up, it could be the perfect time to learn. I know this wasn't really the place for this reply, but it might give you some cheaper options to go flying private, and might help realize the dream. Colon. That other goat said. Some of us are just too stubborn, too stupid and too angry to give up. I usually talk about discipline being the key to most things, which is true, but I hate to admit it blind rage has gotten me though some rather soul crushing events. I wanted to rip the universe a new one so I dragged my sorry ass out of bed and got back in the fight. Fuck you soul crushing universe I'm not going to let you win. Judgment 915 said. I open up a hot dog cart in New York City. I have grind and fill my own hot dogs with natural casings and 100% grass fed beef. I bake my buns fresh every morning. I'd make my own ketchup, mustard and relish from scratch. All dogs grilled to order. None of this dirty hot water BS, since I'd hot smoke all my dogs, they only need a sear to get em hot. Ready in 3 minutes. That's it. Just really friggin good hot dogs. That's my dream. M. Orson said. There's so much sadness, cynicism and general disinterest in the replies. I actually have concrete items on a list to make better music videos as a musician. An Elite Acoustics D6-58 amplifier. An SSL Apollo interface, a new computer, mid-range cameras, toned extra pedal, a Cole Clark or Matron guitar. That should significantly improve my acoustic guitar tones while staying within $50,000. Iceman 1325 said, Pilot here, just throwing out some realistic costs. Pilot's license. 10k, conservative estimate, says in a 150. 35k hanger. 60k is the cheapest I've ever seen a hangar sold for in most started over 100k aircraft A&P mechanic school. 30k, conservative estimate. A few notes. 
Five years ago you could buy a Cessna 172 for 30k which has two more seats and 50% more power than a Cessna 150 but the cost has skyrocketed since then. One of the most expensive parts of flying is actually the operating costs. Annual maintenance inspections cost 2k starting out and it's assuming nothing is wrong with it. Fuel is expensive. Engine has to be overhauled every 2000 flight hours which costs 20k easy. Now obviously this whole situation is hypothetical but I thought I would take the opportunity to show how expensive aviation has become. Iceman 1325 said. In short yes. There are a wide range of factors driving up the cost of aviation, how much each contributes is up for debate. Some notable ones are the usage of new materials like carbon fiber which is better than aluminum but is more expensive, plus most companies are having to completely retool to use it. Newer safety equipment which does save lives, but it isn't cheap. Increased regulations have also increased costs, especially in the flight training side. You need 40 hours of flight training as a legal minimum to get your pilot's license which has been in place for decades. But they have added several additional sections to flight training requirements, so while you used to be able to get it done in 40 hours it's actually closer to 80 hours now. That already adds significant cost but also makes the time investment much higher which can also be a negative effect for progress. There are several more reasons but I will stop with those for now. Tiger Melon said. And maybe you take one young kid under your wing because he's being bullied a bit and he reminds you of yourself, and you don't want him to make the same mistakes you did at that age. And his mom is kinda hot. But this jerk car salesman in town opens a competing dojo leveraging his celebrity from a fight that was like 30 years ago. And he always plays this holier than thou card about defense and cars and crap. What a jackass. So you put your protege in the annual tournament up against his best fighter who is, holy crap, you're a strange son. God this is tense. Eptarch said. I'd divide it into two parts and invest one part in index ETF, bonds dividend stocks and what else is above the market, and use the second half as first mortgage payment for some properties. Then I'd rent it out and pay off my first mortgage. Then I'd get a second one and do the same, then third. By the time I am happy with how much assets I gathered, I'd do some community service stuff, like build a playground or create a swimming pool for my city or whatnot. These 50k would drag me out of poverty pretty damn fast. Sticky Keyboard said. That is not very much money not enough to chase my dream at all. Maybe for like $500,000 I would have enough capital to convince the bank to loan me the rest to open a greenhouse. Or maybe a small homestead farm. Yet alas. I live in an apartment where the rent is higher than mortgage payments, and I have no access to lawn, and only get about 2 hours of direct sun a day so I am unable to garden. I'll let my dreams stay dreams for now while I work in a windowless building instead of living my horticultural dream. Octavarium 8 said. I'd like to try my hand at opening a perfumery business. Over the last few years I've been slowly learning how to create fine perfumes using a mixture of natural and synthetic ingredients, which is tricky since there's not much in the way of online or physical how-to level info. It's also quite costly for the materials, even when scaled up, so it's not something I'd gamble on independently. It's very much a fun hobby and outlet for creativity right now, nothing more. Ready Insurance 4759 said. I would visit every country on my bucket list, or at least, all of the ones that are safe to visit as a black woman. I've always wanted to tour Europe and I'd like to see Ethiopia, Ghana, South Africa, and Brazil. I'd also like to see the Taj Mahal, the Pyramids of Giza, did I botch that, and certain parts of East Asia. But. Traveling is only a secondary passion. My primary dream is writing. I'd publish my own book and I'd probably start an online blog where I'd document the events about my travels and the things I learned from natives, dorky stuff like that. What money I wouldn't use, if there could possibly be any left Lameo, I'd probably just give to someone who needs it. Most likely, I'd give to my younger brother to help him get through school. Civil engineering is an expensive ass major, even with federal aid. Bob the Pillager said. I'd buy a shoulder-mounted TV camera, a mic, and one of those mobile streaming backpacks. I'd just walk around downtown Toronto pretending I'm a live TV station, and just let all the crazies flock to me like moths to a flame, streaming it all. Call it out and about, pronounce dude in a boot, the true Canadian way, 
Just letting people say their piece and poke prod at their beliefs by letting Twitch chat ask a lot of the questions in the interviews. Grandpapotamus said. Honestly, I'd write an album with my friends. I don't care if it never got famous, I don't care if anyone ever listened to it. I'd pay everyone to take some time off of work, I'd rent the studio out. I'd buy the equipment that anyone lacked. But most importantly I'd have all of my friends on the album, even if they didn't know jack about music. I love music. I love making music with people. You can have such a wonderful time even if you just give someone some shakers or a cowbell. Pluck root notes on a bass guitar, learn cowboy chords. Shit if you can count to four, and this is coming from a drummer, you can learn the drums. After we all cut the album I'd rent a venue and preform it live. Again, no cares on how it turns out. Just one night where we all get to live the rock star dream. Texas Leon said. Stay in the military is a career E4. Invest in a few stocks, get a nice car, work out at the gym, go to the strip occasionally, and never have to worry about rent cause you are single and live in the barracks. Only occasionally have to put up with some BS, but it is manageable. By the time you retire at around a 10 year mark, you'll have saved up a fuckton more money to live life as you see fit. And college tuition is free so no debt.